What's up guys, Nick Drew here, and in this video we are talking about reconciling your accounts inside of YNAP. We're going to cover what reconciling is, why it's important, how to reconcile for manual entry, how to reconcile for automatic import, how often you should be reconciling, and what to do when you just can't get YNAP to match up with your bank account. Basically, we're covering all things reconciling in this video, and if you don't need all of that, feel free to skip around using the timestamps in the description down below. That being said, let's jump in. Okay, so before we talk about how to reconcile your accounts, we need to define what reconciling is. Reconciling your accounts is simply making sure that YNAB and the numbers shown here perfectly match your bank account, which leads me to why this matters. So many people will start using YNAB and not even know that they should be reconciling, and you might be one of them. And you probably have an account that looks something like this with no locks over here. We're going to talk about that in a second. And you've never even noticed or clicked on this reconcile account button. And the problem with that is that if you don't ever reconcile your accounts, you can't 100% trust the numbers that are shown here, which means you cannot 100% trust the numbers that are showing up in your available column, which is really the most important thing and what YNAB is all about. After all, the budget screen, this screen here that we're currently looking at, all of these numbers are based on what's happening over here on your individual account screen. And if these numbers aren't correct, then your budget absolutely isn't correct either. So let's dig in a bit more and talk about these cleared, uncleared, and working balances that you see up top. This has to do with reconciling your accounts. If we look at this Discover Miles card here, you can see that we have a transaction that shows our starting balance, and we have one transaction of a Netflix payment of 14 22. We can see that it says our current cleared balance is 2844. We have an unclear balance of zero and a working balance of 2844. So what do these three things mean? Well, the cleared balance represents all the transactions that have cleared in both YNAB and our bank or our credit card. So I can see in YNAB that I do have a Netflix transaction shown here on the 12th for $14.22. So if I were to go to the bank, I should see that over here as well. So I log into my Discover account, click on activity, and I can see that in fact, I did have a $14.22 transaction for Netflix on the 11th, which perfectly matches here as well. The cleared balance should always match the balance of your actual bank account. And we can see that if I look at the current balance on my account, it is in fact 2844, which is what it shows here as well. So I know that these accounts are correct. Now let me show you what's going on on this Discover Manual account. You can see that my clear balance is $882 and some change, which is what the starting balance was. And I have all these transactions here that notice don't have a green C. I'm gonna to get to that in a second. All of these transactions are pending, which means I've entered them in YNAB, but they haven't yet been fully processed by the bank. And if you were to add up all of these transactions, you would see that the total equals the total uncleared balance. That's what the uncleared balance means. The uncleared balance is all of the transactions that have not been fully processed by our bank or credit card. Since YNAB typically doesn't import unclear transactions. If you're linking your accounts and you're never manually entering anything, you will rarely see this uncleared balance be anything other than zero, like you see it on my Discover Miles card here. Since this account is linked and I'm not manually entering stuff, it's only going to pull in the transactions once they fully processed, which means YNAP is never going to pull in anything that isn't cleared, which means the unclear balance is pretty much always going to be zero on linked accounts. And lastly, the working balance is a combination of the two. So if I go back to the Discover manual, you'll see that my cleared balance is $882, my unclear balance is $1,298, and the working balance is those two combined. Now I've already sort of teased this right-hand column over here, this C column, but this column represents whether or not a transaction has in fact cleared or is currently pending or has been reconciled. If we go back and look at the Discover Miles account, we'll see that both of these transactions have green C's, which means that they have cleared. If we go back to the Discover Manual account, you'll see that all of these are uncleared, so they're showing up here. If we start changing these to cleared by clicking on them, you'll notice that the balance up here starts changing. Then if we unclear them, it adds them back to the uncleared balance. Now we're gonna find out in a second what happens when we actually reconcile this account, but here's a teaser. When you reconcile the accounts, all of these green C's are going to turn into green 
locks. And this is important because if you're ever troubleshooting in the future and you're trying to find a mistake between YNAB and your bank account, you don't have to go past any of the green locks. You can just start where you've most recently reconciled and move forward from there. It keeps you from having to dig all the way back in your account history if you're reconciling regularly. Okay, enough of all this defining what reconciling is and talking about the different balances. Let's get to an example. So first, let's walk through what it's like to reconcile your accounts if you're doing manual entry. First thing you should do is turn on this show running balance feature, which YNAB recently added and is really helpful for reconciling your accounts. Next, I would log into the account that you plan to reconcile. And ideally, if your computer screen is big enough, you would go ahead and just pull up the windows side by side. Once you're logged in, you want to navigate to your recent activity and scroll down to the most recent transaction that hasn't been reconciled in YNAB. If we look over my YNAB account, we can see that on November 15th, I have my first transaction that isn't reconciled. So that's where I'm going to look in my bank. Scroll down until I see November 15th. And here we are. Once I've got my YNAB set up side by side, I'm simply just gonna go through these one by one. Here's the Kickstarter for $418, Kickstarter for $418. Now, while I'm doing this, I am going to sort of spot check the categories and just make sure that I have, in fact, entered things correctly. 153 for Galen Medical, come over here to 153 for Galen Medical, $300 for the Christian Care, and there's $300 for that. Cash saver for 2081, cash saver for 2081, 1649, 1649, 14630, 14630, 4588, 4588. You get the idea. And if I look at any time during this, I can see that my running balance right here is 195046. And if I look over here at the last transaction that I did, it's 195046. So they perfectly match. That's what we want to see. Let's speed this up a bit. And Y goals for 26, 27, 26, 27. Now I'm showing all of my transactions reconciled on the Discover Manual account. I do have some pending transactions. That's fine. I'm not worried about those right now. Now I want to look back and see what the current balance on the card is. And if we look, sure enough, 2,181,16. Two cleared balance 2,181,16. I can reconcile the account. Yes, that is in fact my current balance. So I click the yes button and boom, it just hid all my reconciled transactions. If I click show all, you'll see that it turned all of those green C's into nice green locks. So in the future, I know that if I ever want to troubleshoot my account, up to November 24th, 2019, I know this account perfectly and 100% matches my real life Discover card. So I can sleep easy knowing that all these numbers match and make sense. And now if I'd like, I can hide these by clicking filter and unchecking the reconciled. Now, I know a lot of people hate doing manual entry and just refuse, and that's fine. I get it. Hannah and I like doing it because it forces us to stay on top of the budget and know exactly what's happening with our money. But if you want to do automatic import, that's fine. We're going to go over an example with that as well. So let's click over here into this Discover Auto account. Now, this is the exact same Discover card. I've just simply linked it. And this time, this is typically what you're going to see if you're not getting into YNAB on a super regular basis. You're going to have an account. You're going to have maybe a handful of transactions, and then you're going to have this big fat 21 new transactions to import, approve, or categorize, or right here, import 21. And when I click that, YNAB is going to import all the transactions that it's been waiting to import. Boom. Now I can see all these transactions come in. YNAB is automatically categorizing them based on my previous categorizations. You know, last time I went to Weigel's, it was gas. Last time I went to Pilot, it was gas. So YNAB is smart enough to recognize and it's automatically throwing it into a category that it thinks is correct. But because YNAB as a software, as a company, they're so big on you being in control of your money and you paying attention, they're not going to let you get away with just never looking at this again once it's been imported. That's why it makes bold all of these transactions, puts this header up here that says you need to approve them, and throws this new column right here with the little blue eye for you to actually approve the transactions as you see them. Now, if you're using automatic import, like I said earlier, it's going to go ahead and clear the transaction because obviously if YNAB imported it, it had to clear from your bank account since YNAB is not going to pull in pending transactions. Now the process here is basically the same way as for the manual. We can just go a lot faster if you're automatically importing because you're going to really just spot check that all the categories are correct. If something doesn't have a category, like for instance, YNAB didn't recognize this bonfire transaction. So I'm gonna need to actually put that in as giving and approve it there. 
And then what I'm gonna do is sort of spot check and say, hey, look, my cleared balance, it does in fact match the current balance. So I know that all of these are right. I'm just gonna say, okay, yeah, Weigel's, Cast, McDonald's, Date Night, okay, Screen Door, yep, that was eating out, Ulta, yep, that's cosmetics. I'm sort of spot checking all these, making sure that they look like they got added to the correct place. And then I can either go through here and manually approve them one by one, or I can select them all at once, click edit, and approve them all together if I'm confident that they are right. And then of course, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did to the manual account. I'm gonna click reconcile, say yes, this is my current balance, and perfect, YNAB has now turned all these to locks, and I can hide them from view if I'd like to. Now one quick note I do wanna make for the people who are doing automatic import, I would still highly recommend you adding a few manual transactions every now and again, especially if you're doing like a really big purchase. Let's say for example, that you buy a big screen TV for Christmas for $400. You'd probably wanna manually enter that on your phone so that it can immediately affect your Christmas budget and show you exactly where you're at. And then in a few days when the transaction gets processed, it will get overridden and show up exactly like the transactions we just showed where it's sort of bolded and has this blue. It actually won't be an eye, it'll be a chain right here for ones that sort of manually override. Either way, it'll show up bolded and you'll just need to approve it. YNAB actually does a pretty darn good job as long as you've entered it correctly with the correct amount of overriding transactions rather than duplicating them. Okay, so we've talked about how to reconcile for manual accounts, how to reconcile for automatically imported accounts. But thus far, the numbers have been pretty easy and straightforward. Everything that showed up here perfectly matched our real life account. But what happens when the numbers don't? Well, let's look at our TJ Maxx reward cards and walk through an example. I have went ahead and put together sort of a step-by-step -step process for you to walk through, which shows you exactly what I do when I'm reconciling our accounts and I just can't figure out where I went wrong. Here's the steps I go through. First step, I reconcile as much as I can. This is what I already have done. I log into my account, I click on activity, I go through and I say, oh yeah, all these transactions showed up, boom, clear, 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 clear. And then I look and I say reconcile account, 39982, crap, no, it's 43037. Where am I off? Why can't I get this to work? And so this is what I do next. I come over here and first I say, okay, let me look at my quick issues. First off, did I actually check every transaction, right? And I go through and I look one by one. If I don't see the problem, then I say, okay, do I have an inflow that should be an outflow? For example, let's say that I had actually, you know, accidentally put in the Walmart transaction as an inflow, you know, well, that's gonna significantly throw off my balance versus as an outflow. Next, do you have anything entered twice? Uh, Hannah has entered something and then sometimes I'll go back and enter something and we don't realize that we have actually already both entered the same thing. Next, do you have something marked cleared in YNAB that actually isn't showing up in your bank account at all? This is also pretty common. Let's say that you, you know, enter a transaction and you accidentally or go ahead and clear it, but it's still pending in your bank account, like this one here. You know, today I went to TJ Maxx and we bought something, but it, you don't see anything on 12.1 over here. If I had already added this in and then cleared it, and then it's still pending over on my TJ Maxx real life account, that's gonna cause a problem in my balance. Okay, next, I say, do I have something entered in the wrong account? This is also something really common, especially if you're using the YNAB phone app to enter transactions. It's very, very easy to accidentally enter the transaction on the TJ Maxx card when really that happened in the checking account or the Discover account, so double check that. Next, double check to see if your bank account is including pending transactions in the balance. There's a lot of banks that if you have a pending transaction, this is especially common on checking accounts, if you have a pending transaction, it will actually include it inside the current balance and you don't want to do that. So if you see that, what you wanna do is go ahead and sort of subtract that balance out or look for the total running balance as of today, not whatever the current balance is on the account. Now, if you answer all of these questions, okay, remember this is the sort of look for quick issues. If you answer all of these and that didn't solve your problem, then what's probably going on is that you're either missing something completely or you've entered something incorrectly and the number is just slightly off. So let's go to number three. This is where I actually will search for both the account statement and YNAB for the exact amount that I'm off by. If I come over here and I say reconcile account and I say, well, actually, no, that's not my balance. YNAB's gonna say, okay, well, enter your current balance. And I'll say, okay, 430.37, hit okay. And YNAB's gonna say, hey, there's a $30.55 difference. And I'll say, okay, continue. And it's gonna put this right up here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy that, Command-C, and I'm gonna search. 
Okay, well, I'm not showing anything in Y now for 3055. So let's come over here and see where I'm off. I can do Command F and just literally search the web page for 3055. And what do you know? There it is. Jax on November the 12th. Somehow did not get that entered over here. So now I'm going to go ahead and enter it. So that was November the 12th. It's Jax going to be eating out for 3055. Cleared because it did hit. Save and boom. Look at this. This account's cleared balance and YNAB now has the same balance as your actual account. 430. 37, 430, 37. I have found the issue. I can finish reconciling, turn all these into locks, and I am done. Okay. So that's um, one of the most common places you'll find it. Oftentimes, I'm rarely off by a lot of transactions. It's normally like one that's causing me a problem. So I'll typically search for that specific amount. And sometimes you get lucky and you find it. Now, if that's not what's going on and you're still off, I want to show you what to do next, okay? Number four is to look for common payee issues. So restaurants, for example, um, really common to have problems here because restaurants typically don't include tips until after it's processed, meaning they run your card for, let's say, $20, and so the pending transaction on your card is $20, but the tip amount might take it to $25. So what's going on is that if you accidentally forget the tip and you manually enter something into YNAB, Let's say that, you know, I go to the Waffle House and I only enter $20 and I don't enter the tip. In a few days, I'm going to be off by $5 because it's actually going to hit my account for $25, but YNAB's only going to show the $20. Gas stations are another common one because they often put weird holds on your account. And so you may not always enter the exact right thing. And then a couple days later, when it actually processes, it's a different amount than the hold that was put on there. Okay, so let's hop over here to the checking account and talk about number five. If you go through one, two, three, four, and still have not found the issue for why you cannot get this cleared balance to perfectly match up with the actual balance, then you can do my last ditch effort, which is where you literally start unclearing transactions backwards until you find the last date where this matched up. This is where in an ideal world, you would have the running balance showing up in your bank and you can sort of look at it and go, okay, as I unclear stuff, my bank account balance is going from 4,535, okay, 4,768, and you're constantly checking this number back and forth, back and forth, until you get down to the last time that you had reconciled the account and you show up with this nice lock. So basically you get to a point where you just have locks and then gray C's, all right? And then you start going forward all over again, one by one, extremely carefully, okay? Until you find the issue. And then if that still doesn't work, or you just don't want to do that, you can skip straight to number six, doing a manual balance adjustment and moving on. So what does that mean? Well, back over here, this is where we click reconcile account. And we say, actually, you know what? That's not my current balance. My current balance is 8,458.45 or 40.45. Uh, and then one app says, hey, there's a $4 difference. And I say, I know, I know continue and then I say yeah I don't know what's going on so I'm just going to create adjustment and finish now what YNAB just did is it locked all these transactions and it created this brand new transaction that says reconciliation balance adjustment entered automatically by YNAB it puts an outflow or an inflow whatever is required to get this cleared balance to perfectly match your account and there's absolutely no shame in doing this if you need to i do not want you losing sleep because you can't get ynab to perfectly match the bank account and you're off by a few bucks now obviously if you're off by a lot you've got to determine what a lot means to you right if you are off by a lot more than you're comfortable with then you need to dig into the weeds and figure out where the issue is. That's sort of what those steps that I just walked you through are all about. Just know that it's not the end of the world if you need to do a balance adjustment. Now, I can tell you one way to make sure that you don't have to do this reconciliation balance adjustment, or at least certainly reduce your odds of needing to do that, is by reconciling often. My sort of ideal recommendation is once a week. At minimum, I would say every time you get paid and you come in here and you got a whole bunch of money and to be budgeted, you should be reconciling then. So for a lot of people, that's every other week. But when you're first getting started with YNAB, 
I would honestly recommend maybe even multiple times a week, especially if you have a large family or lots of transactions. The more often you reconcile, the better off you're gonna be, and the more likely you are to stick with things long-term and know that you can trust all of your numbers. All right, so that's how you reconcile all of your accounts. Now, be sure to check out my YNAB playlist for more tutorials like what to do at the end of each month and how to set and define goals for each and every category. You can also download all of my YNAB checklists at mappedoutmoney.com forward slash YNAB dash checklist. As always, remember, I can teach you how to budget, but I can't make you do it. The choice is yours. We'll see y'all next time.